So, uh, without further ado, let's start. Uh. Okay, today, the, actually, your title say practical geotechnical design. I'm very worried. Actually, the, the, the full title is practical guide to ball power design in Singapore. So, I'm, I don't want to claim that now uh, the current practice is not practical, it's unpractical. I'm just saying that from my perspective, uh, I just want to share with you what are the how do we approach this ball power design? Okay, uh, so I will start. Okay, this is not the first time I conduct this webinar. I've conducted twice, uh, each around 100 people because that's the maximum people that we can allow in Zoom. Uh, yeah, actually it meant to be a, a training for the some junior engineers and site staff when they carry out their work. So yeah, that's the intent. Uh, that's the intent. Okay. Let's start. Huh? Okay, so you can, the previous video I also recorded, you can actually uh, go to my YouTube channel. I tried YouTube so that everybody can go there and refresh. Huh? You can get me through this true platform. You can go to YouTube. Appreciate you can subscribe to it or to the Facebook or to the LinkedIn account. You can all find that. Okay, I will show this later on. You, if you, you have your handphone, you just straight away you can click on. Now, a, a brief introduction. Actually, uh, beside the has a P Joe, I'm also an AC Joe. So I just give you the certification. I'm not to boost anything, but just show you my certification. Okay, these are some of the letters or testimony by the consultant that I used to support when, when they don't have to tanker department at that time. Huh? Okay, so these are the testimony of those people who have attended previously uh, my webinar. Uh, why I'm showing you this because I I want to congratulate you all uh, for turning up to this uh, webinar. I really want to congratulate you because half of the equation to success is just by showing up. So just by showing up, you, you are 50% more successful than people. I always believe that. Huh? So I believe you will take away something from what I'm going to share today. Uh, pardon me, I have to speak a bit faster because I think you don't want to, uh, to drag too long in the seminar. Okay, first thing, uh, okay, we all know uh, knowledge is power and time is money, all right? So power, uh, according to what you learn in physics, uh, is work done over time or, or energy over time, right? So you equate these two, uh, you notice, uh, eh, how come the more knowledge you have, the more work you will do, but less money you will do, you will gain, right? Interesting, uh, interesting perspective. You just keep this equation in mind, just keep this equation in mind. Because some of you are here uh, are students. You, I know now COVID-19, uh, we're talking about unemployment. In fact, many companies are cutting their staff. I know you are worried about your employment or even those people who are in your current employment, you're also worried. But I want to, uh, later I'll share with you what, what, how you should approach this scenario, okay? Now, uh, this is a real starting of the technical stuff. Huh? So the ground is full of surprises for the unwary. You all know uh, this is from the famous Carl Tazaki, the father of soil mechanics. Okay. Now, especially true for those, I know there are some many masters students here as well. You guys probably are, are working already and uh, you probably work as a structural engineer. Most of the time you don't do pure geotechnical works. For the past 20 years, I only do geotechnical works, okay? So I just want to remind those uh, structural engineers that you, uh, that the, the, the big difference in geotechnical and structural engineering is that you can't see what you're dealing with, okay? Although you think you can see that, but actually you can't see. Now, let's talk about some famous uh, foundation failure first. Of course, Tower of Pisa is not a ball power uh, failure, but it is a, deep, it's a very classical case of foundation failure. At that time, they do not have ball power. Okay, so it's 3.97 degrees. I have not been there in Italy, uh, so I hope I will have a chance to go there one of these days. Now, this is uh, another collapse in, the, in Shanghai, and uh, this is uh, a local riverside apartment complex. Okay, this was actually quite uh, publicly reported in China. Okay, if you notice on your right of the picture, there's a stock pile of soil, and this at the building just collapsed, right? Yeah. Now, so a uh, closer look at the foundation pile, you'll notice that they are actually probably using spun piles, okay? 
And uh, you can see that actually they, they, it's kind of a show off. The whole part is kind of show off. The, you will notice the, the buildings are pretty intact, okay? They're pretty intact. Now this is the, the newspaper uh, in Hong Kong, that what they have reported likely to be the reason of failure. There's a stock of uh, soil here. Then they do some excavation. It's not a very deep excavation. It's only 4.6 meter deep of excavation. I don't know whether they have retaining system. Probably they do open cut. So the unbalanced load caused the power to show off and that's why the, the buildings collapse. Okay, that's what the newspaper reported. Now, this is, the, this is quite new. About three years ago, it was reported in uh, Straits Times uh, in San Francisco. There's a very premium condominium that they found out that it's tilting. And uh, uh, the most dangerous part is that the residents are always staying inside this uh, condo when they realize the building is actually tilting, okay? Now, so it's a 58 story, okay? They notice that they have sank 40 cm, which is almost 400 mm, well above whatever limits you can have, and tilted over 37.5 cm at its top and 5 cm at its base. Okay, now, the, he also mentioned that this power was actually constructed on the loose wet soil, okay, near to the fox line. And also, they, this is actually building on a reclaimed area, okay, in San Francisco. I have also never been to San Francisco, so I don't know about this area, but this is also a reported case. Now, come back nearer to home. This is, okay. Although I have seriously doubt it's only tilt 0 0.1 degree, okay, that's what reported in the newspaper, okay. Third, third Church Street, if you don't know where is Third Church Street, it's actually called the Samsung Hub, okay, it's actually called the Samsung Hub. Why is it called the Samsung Hub? Because Samsung was the original builder for this building, okay. But they're not the original owner, huh? original owner was a conglomerate between uh, DBS Land and, um, and Kappa Land, you're not wrong. Now, what happened? This is a 30-story building, all right? When they find out, when BC actually pressed charges on the main contractor and the QP, they found that actually 66 out of 73 pounds uh, did not socket into the competent short term, did not socket five meter. That means not enough socketing length, all right? inadequate. And they notice the building already set the, the maximum settlement is 164 mm. The minimum is 70 mm. Okay, this number actually I take up from the, the court report. Okay, it's actually reported in the legal papers in the court. Okay, uh, Professor Henry Tan from AUS was actually the one of the expert witness in this case. Okay, now from the papers, he also mentioned that only original only five ball holes and the, and the five ball holes all indicate that this location is Jurong Formation. But after they found that building has still, they do additional borehole, uh, 34 borehole, uh, they actually found that two thirds of the site was underlaid by this geological formation called Fort Canning Boulder. Okay, you must understand in, in 2002, uh, Fort Canning Bouldery Clay, uh, FCBC, is not recorded in the geological map. Okay, later we will talk about geological map. So at that time, it was so-called classified under Jurong Formation by the geologist of the original soil investigation, okay? Soil investigation company. Okay, so, so that is the, 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 the issue. Uh. So this is the main point that I highlighted, the full paper you can go and see uh, yourself. Now, miraculous, uh, uh, the, the, it's a miracle that the, the, actually the QP in the end was not uh, charged. Oh, he was acquitted. And only poor guy that was charged is the IE. Okay, the only poor guy that was charged was the IE, and he was fined ten thousand dollars. This is a very high profile case. Huh? this is a very high profile case. Many experts, including uh, Professor Bronze, was also involved. Uh, those uh, Paulus, Professor Paulus, was also involved. So many people was involved. Many people were involved in this uh, in this case. In the end, the builder. Uh, the main contractor, which is Samsung, uh, reached a settlement with the developer, also had a settlement with the consultant. Okay, I do not want to mention who is the consultant, who is the QP, you can search online, you know who is it, okay? 
So you just bear in mind this case. Huh? These are the key thing. 66 out of 73 means that only 10% of the pulse actually socketed into the competent short term adequately according to the drawing. Very interesting. Huh? And nobody sounded this thing when the pulse was completed. They all think that, well, actually they are, the ground behave much more uh, favorable than what they think from the borehole. Okay? Now, so this is some of the famous case history. I just want you to aware that, you know, remember what Zaki said, right? The ground is full of surprises. Now, uh, this is, I think myself, I, I, I come up with this design cycle myself. So uh, before we start the design, there's a design planning stage. Like, like do we need really to use ball pounds? I noticed Singapore is now, now today, everyone is using ball pounds for deep foundation. Uh, do we really need to use ball pulse in some of the cases? And also then after that, we do the prelim design. And from the prelim design, we do the testing and the monitoring before we go to the detailed design. Then we go to the actual construction. When the actual construction, there'll be variation. Like what you see in those cases, you got only, you got 90% of pulse did not actually achieve the socketing length. There's a variation and you need to actually go back to do a detailed design to make sure that the design intent is met. Okay, sounds common sense, right? Sounds common sense. If, but I notice a lot of so-called common sense are really uncommon. Okay, I'm not sure whether you 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 hear me, but I'm telling from my 20 years of experience, I have I have seen many people who don't talk any common sense at all. Okay, so for this workshop, uh, we only talk about the design. Uh, planning and preliminary design. Okay, actually, I'm for, I'm doing another preparing another slide for the instrumentation. Okay, so for the, for the testing and the monitoring. Okay, so that one will be the later part. Like if you're keen, you all can join next time. Okay, let's go to the basic first. Uh, the load transfer mechanism. The load transfer is very simple, right? You notice that the wires column transfer to power cap, power cap transfer to the pulse. Okay. Now then, from the pulse, right? You transfer to the soil. Okay, you the, the, the it can only transfer while friction and end bearing. So some pulse have they mobilize the friction and end bearing. Some pulse they don't mobilize the end bearing. So some pulse design for end bearing only. Uh, in fact, very few pulse actually design for end bearing only. Yeah. Okay. In case you are not familiar, my webinar is not you ask question. Is I ask you question. So which load case is the which load case is the most common? Our because I don't know all of you, right? So I'm free to pinpoint any one of you uh, to answer the question. Uh, so this one I must ask a practical student. Who is the okay, let me check. Zhang Si Wen, are you here? Hey, when I call your name, you can unmute yourself. Zhang Si Wen, are you here? Zhang Wen. Wow, no response. <laughs> Zhang Wen, are you here? Hello? Maybe no. Okay. Let me ask, uh, okay, Tida, Tida, are you here? Yes, yes Tida. Yep. Are you a must? MSc student? Uh, yes, currently, yep. Yeah, okay, good. So which load case is the most common based on your experience so far in the in your company or in your work life? Uh, friction and end bearing. Friction and bearing, right? Yes. Okay, you see, uh, friction and bearing, uh? okay, good. <laughs> yep. Can you can mute yourself. Uh? So, okay. Tida, did I know you? Do I know you? I think you sound familiar, <laughs> sorry. So, uh, but I know you, but I don't think you know me. <laughs> oh, okay. You know about me. Huh? Okay, good, good, good. Okay, never mind. So, did I say fixture and bearing is the, is the most common look case? Uh, to know the answer is in my part two of my lecture in the instrumentation and monitoring. Okay, today you will not know the answer. Now, let's go to the next one. Okay, 